what's super exciting is there's actually a paper that does look at a dappling bench directly against tretinoin in the realm of anti-aging. Yes. We love retinoids as a topic because they're pretty much a paper on almost any paper, uh, almost any question you may have. Mm. Um, so this is really great. And it's even a pretty long-term study. There is 128 women in, uh, in the study. So about, you say. You know, about 60 some odd in each group. Mm. One group used 0.3% dappling. So mm. now we're talking about prescription level dappling benched against a 0.05% level mm. tretinoin. So this is uh, a two very common prescription levels for these two ingredients. And they used this for 24 weeks, which is um, twice as long as the first study. So that's fantastic. The conclusion from the study directly is just simply, it's on par. But mm. let's take a closer look at the results. Um, um, <laughs> first of all, I present these the creepiest <laughs> clinical pictures in the history of clinical pictures. Um, Victoria, <laughs> describe to people who are not watching but just listening what these pictures look like. We should preface with <clears throat> clinical studies when they share visual images. They will sometimes bar out the eyes just to give anonymity to some of these subjects. Um, but the way they go about <laughs> barring the eye, like blackening the eyes out is like a very sometimes artistic approach. And what you see here are they have essentially put circles on each eyeball um, and with no rhyme or reason or measurement, it seems like. So you've got uh, dots here that aren't actually even Lined aligned <laughs> on the same level. They're not even leveled. Um, and it's just, it's it's a horror picture. <laughs> yeah, it looks like they tasked some very disgruntled intern or entry-level employees. I black out the eye. Like, okay. <laughs> it's just rude. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like if I am a participant in the study, yeah, I would want to read that disclosure form much close, yeah. like closer. Just, I don't want to look at myself turn into yeah. that. Like, holy crap. Like, if you saw your face in this published paper like this, I don't know. This is uncool. And, you know, she's wearing a hairnet. And I mean, it's just unfair. It's terrifying. Yeah. But I will say the before and after picture definitely made us raise our brows. Um, <laughs> this one, this before. For other reasons aside from <laughs> the <that>. terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> so in the picture um, between visit one and visit 24, mm. she is like a solid three shades darker. Like she <laughs> will not be able to use the same foundation between week zero yes, and week 24. Completely. I think she must have gotten a spray tan or something but i just yes it's i would it's interesting that this is used as like the best example for this yeah, paper exactly it made me kind of raise a brow a little bit yeah. at the um at the results i can imagine they picked it because it does look dramatic yeah. but the skin tone difference for me is like it's not realistic it's not going to be mm. super whitening per se this can be a result of just different seasons because 23 24 weeks is pretty long time mm. And also, it could be because with the protocol, they start using sunscreen. Mm. And this participant might not have ever used a sunscreen before <laughs> just because of how thin she is. But I will say from the pictures, what you can see is that um, in the side view, that model pigmentation mm -hmm. seems to have gotten better. Yeah. Her lines, in a way, actually look a little worse, like the forehead lines. But again, it could be because the pigmentation is a little different. Um, it's it's hard to say if fine lines and wrinkles are actually improved here. Yeah. And one fun fact about taking these photos, it's actually very difficult to take mm -hmm. um, very consistent photography over time. Um, one example here you can see is um, on the at the 24 weeks, she's actually raising her eyebrow. So it, it looks like she has more wrinkles yeah. or their wrinkles are more severe since the first week. But that's actually just because, you know, sometimes they have to tell participants to relax, you know move their chin forward or back, all of that can affect mm -hmm. um, the photo. So it's just something to keep in mind and why like it, it can be really hard if you only look at before and afters, which is why we're going to look at the measurements. Yeah. Fun side note, both Victoria and I have taken these video images of <laughs> our faces. Yeah. It's really hard. Like even the most subtle change, like mm -hmm. you don't realize how like when you're in there, if you're a little nervous and mm -hmm. your face tense up, mm -hmm. um, how that would change everything. Yeah. Or if you just lean down just a little bit, it, it uh, it changes the data completely. Totally. So um, anyway, we're going to look at the numbers. Yep. They did these really, really confusing looking bar graphs. But <laughs> if, we'll put this on the screen. Yes. Long story short, this is um, um, expert assessment mm -hmm. of their skin condition. Mm. They looked at things like um, just global assessment on photo aging. So anything from pigmentation, lines, and like sagging, they look at it as a complete picture. Mm -hmm. And then they also zoomed in and looked at difference in um, periorbital wrinkles around mm -hmm. the eyes 
And then they also looked at、um, specifically pigmentation compared to the baseline, and then differences in forehead wrinkles. And what we're looking for is we want the green bar to be smaller、mm-hmm. as time goes on, because green means it's baseline.、Mm-hmm. And then colors like、uh, blue and yellow should be improving because these are、uh, these means that it's getting better over time. So basically, if you're looking at the bottom half of the graph, those colors mean that they're improving. And on the left side, you have results from a dappling, and on on the right side, you have results from tretinoin. Gonna be honest, this is a very creative way of showing the data, but this is very unconventional. It took me a fifteen <laughs> minutes to be like, okay, what am I looking at? <laughs> yeah, this is a rainbow bar. Okay,、mm-hmm. yeah, but yeah. we will spare you all the details. We'll、yeah. put the graphs up. You can squint at it with us if you would like. <laughs> but long story short, a dappling and tretinoin does seem to be trending the same direction, especially in the global assessment、mm-hmm. part. But what's interesting is when it comes to periorbital wrinkles、mm-hmm. around the eye, tretinoin seems to be doing much much better. You'll see that、um, light blue bar at the bottom, that expansion is just much more dramatic than a dappling,、mm-hmm. um, which I find interesting because、um, eye area concerns is an art of its own. It's、yeah. very difficult. So a dappling here doesn't seem to perform as well as on tretinoin just on that metric. Yeah, no, that's a great point, and we should also mention irritation as well. Yeah,、um, uh, like Victoria mentioned, in the point one percent dappling study, it seemed to be much less irritating、mm-hmm. than tretinoin. But in this point three percent study, what's interesting is irritation level and the number of irritation incidences seem to be on par,、um, even even on the severity of these irritations. So we should mention that、um, there there are a lot more studies than this one. Most studies seem to mention that it's less irritating than tretinoin,、yeah. but do not jump into it thinking that oh, that's the van- vanilla retinoid. I am not going to get any irritation. You are still going to get some of those classic ones. No, that's a really good point. And I think the other thing I was going to mention is、um, one thing that I noticed when we were looking at our tretinoin clinicals was that a lot of the irritation、um, really looked at was from the onboarding period of like one to two months.、Mm-hmm. But then once they actually, I feel like. It's also partially why the tests were up to six months because、yeah. it, once these subjects kind of acclimated, I feel like irritation wasn't actually all that bad、mm-hmm. by the six month. And、mm-hmm. I just think that's like an interesting anecdote to keep in mind, and probably can explain why, like when you do this comparison, like by the six month time point, users are probably for the most part pretty okay with that percentage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. What I really love about this study is. Is that they actually also t-、um, took skin biopsies? Yeah. So they kind of explored what was going on the deeper layers、yes. of skin, and this one to me is really interesting because adapting seemed to be trending in the same direction as tretinoin.、Mm. So your stratum corneum, which is the outer, outer, outermost layer of your skin that's mostly dead, for both of、um, for both groups, it, that kind of thinned out a little bit over twenty、mm-hmm. four weeks, which makes sense. Your skin turnover is very high, so that layer of dead cells just gets a little bit thinner. <laughs> the deeper layers of your epidermis is actually getting thicker over、mm-hmm. time, which is consistent with the fact that your collagen type one density is、yeah. also going up over time,、right. which I think is the the、yeah. spec that, that everyone, everyone cares about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it, for both groups, they are trending in the right direction. For these type of data, I will say the punch biopsy. This one wasn't super clear to me in the paper in how many subjects that they、mm-hmm. did this on, but、um, usually it is、uh, it is statistically significant. But I will say that it's、um, based on the data. We can say they're trending in the same direction, but it's hard to say which one's better per se.、Mm, yeah, and I think、um, one thing, if those of you don't know what punch biopsies are, they're actually、um, are cutting a small sample of skin from subjects. So thank you, subjects,、um, and do a histological analysis、mm-hmm. where they look at the layers of the skin and just. They're just looking for any sort of markers, and they're taking measurements to see, you know, over time, is there any changes? And so, it's really hard actually、mm-hmm. to find any sort of punch biopsy sample for normal skincare ingredients. Yeah.、Um, but punch biopsies are very cool. They can tell us a lot of things that you just cannot get through instrumentation、mm-hmm. or clinical grading. So, great stuff.、Yeah. This is kind of exciting and、mm-hmm. kind of show that adapting could work as an anti aging ingredient. Could. could. Interesting. <laughs> and then the catch here is, it is at that point three level. So if、yes. you go and buy that OTC point one percent, are you getting any benefits? <laughs> Me. Yeah. 